According to season one, American dogs are like super, super unhealthy. And why is that? Well, I'll tell you in the video. So Cesar Milan grew up on this farm in Mexico, and there were a bunch of dogs on the farm. He was like surrounded by dogs, and the dogs were all running around all day. They were all happy. They had jobs. Um, they they seemed like psychologically healthy dogs. And then when Cesar Milan was a kid, he had to move to the city because his parents were like, "You have to go to school." And in the city, there were a bunch of dogs too. And Cesar Milan was like, "You know, these dogs aren't happy. These dogs, they're fucked up. They they don't they don't seem like." They're as happy as the dogs in the countryside. And then, when Caesar Milan was 21, he went to the U.S. and he found out that American dogs were even more miserable than the dogs in Mexican cities. And he's like, well, why is that, right? Why, is, why are the dogs on the farm happy? Why are the dogs in Mexican cities not happy? And the dogs in America so unhappy? Well, it's because the dogs on the farm are living more in accordance with their nature. Right, the dogs on the farm, you know, dogs evolve to run around in packs and hunt and explore new territory. And when dogs live on a farm, they get to do that. When dogs live in a city, they don't get to do that. And when they live in America, a lot of Americans use their dogs as like surrogate kids. And we like to, you know, love them and show them all this affection and like we're using them to meet our needs of wanting to care for something. But dogs needs like they don't want to be cared for, they just want to run around and hunt and do stuff. Caesar Milan got famous because he's like really, really good at taking dogs with serious behavioral problems, right? Like dogs that are super disobedient and act like they're the boss of the house, or you know, even dogs that attack people, and turning them back into normal, healthy dogs. He got hired by Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith to help their dog. He got hired by Oprah to help her dog. He gets hired by like tons of celebrities to help their dogs. And how does he do it? Well, he just treats them like dogs, right? He puts them in an environment that's similar to the environment that they evolved in. If you're in Los Angeles and you go for a drive one morning and you see a guy running and he's got like 40 dogs running behind him and none of them are on a leash, well, that's probably Caesar Milan. So is your dog unhappy? And if so, what can you learn from Caesar Milan about how you can make your dog more happy? Well, he wrote a book called Caesar's Way, which is basically his methodology for dealing with dogs, how to make a dog happier. And in this video, I'm going to tell you all about what he says to do. So first things first, dogs are pack animals, and because they're pack animals, they evolve to follow a leader, right? Like when dogs or wolves are out in nature, they get into a group, and one of the dogs is the leader. And with your dog, you need to be the leader, right? Like the dog is looking for somebody to follow, and if there's nobody to follow, then it's going to start leading. And if the dog starts leading, then it's going to kind of like lead you on walks, and it's going to be a disaster. So you have to be the leader. So how can you be your dog's leader? Well, Caesar Milan says that you want to have what's called calm assertive energy, right? Where you kind of act as though you expect your dog to do what you tell it to do. You don't want to get like angry or super emotional or anything like that. Just be chill. And if you're chill and if you have good calm assertive energy, then your dog will reward you by going into a calm submissive state. And a calm submissive state is where he kind of just does what you say and he's happy. A lot of dog owners make the mistake of when their dog does something they don't like, they yell at him or they, they get really mad. And a lot of dog owners make the opposite mistake of just tolerating it. And what you want to do actually is you want to do something in the middle. You want to do what Caesar Milan calls a correction where you kind of like clip him on the neck in a non-painful way. And that tells the, like that's what dogs do to each other in nature, right? If you're, if a dog gets out of line, then the leader of the dog will kind of like nip him. And that tells them like, hey, you gotta, you gotta stop doing that. A lot of people don't really want to have this sort of relationship with their dog because they use their dog as a surrogate kid, right? Like for example, Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey has great calm assertive energy in her normal life when she's on her show, but she was not calm and assertive with her dog. When she was with her dog, she would like hug him and squeeze him and talk to him in baby voices. And the problem with that is Oprah's dog was like, oh shit, Oprah's not being the leader. I have to be the leader, and then Oprah lost control of her dog. You can still love your dogs, and you can still give them affection, and it's good thing. It's a good thing if you do, but you have to do it the right way, and you have to establish the relationship on the right terms first. So, how do you give your dog affection? Well, that's what I'm going to talk about right now. So, if you're saying to yourself, like, Theo, you know, this all, I, I understand what you're saying, but I got my dog so that I could have a best friend, and so that I could care for him, and so I could love him, and that's all fine and dandy. Um, you can still do that. But 
you have to be a little careful because if you do it the wrong way, then your dog can either see it as a sign of weakness and that they can they, they have to take charge or that they can walk all over you or that you could reward them for bad behavior and then they start doing the bad behavior more. So you have to be a little careful. And the first thing is you only want to give your dog affection when he's in a calm, submissive state. Right, and you can kind of, like if you're a dog owner, you probably know what calm, submissive energy means. If you look at your dog, you'll, you'll be able to kind of tell. But if you reward him when he's not in a calm, submissive state, then what you're, or if you give him affection, then what you're really doing is you're rewarding him for having different types of energy. And then the dog will say like, okay, this is what he wants. I'm going to, I'm going to act like this more often. And then you're going to have a nightmare on your hands. So you only want to be super, super nice and cozy and friendly with your dog when he's in the right state of mind. You also need to make sure that your dog is getting enough exercise, right? Like when Caesar Milan, the first thing he does every morning with all his dogs is he goes for a run. And the reason he does that is because dogs, you know, in nature, they exercise and if they're not exercising, then they're not happy, right? They get like antsy and jittery and yippy. And so if you want, if you want to get your dog into a calm, calm submissive state faster, the best thing you can do is just take him for a walk. Caesar Milan says that affection is one of three parts of being a good dog owner, and the other two parts are more important. And the other two parts are exercise and discipline. So if your dog's not getting enough exercise, then you know, nothing else you do really matters, your dog's gonna be unhappy. And if your dog's not disciplined, then you can't give him affection because then you're rewarding his bad behavior. So if you're taking him on walks and you're you know, not, and he knows that you're in charge and that you're the leader and he does what you want him to do and he's a good dog, then you give him all the affection you want. You know, you can cuddle with him while you watch Netflix or you can pet him or you can, you know, do whatever. He's your dog. Enjoy. So anyways, thanks for checking out this video. If you're new around here, my name's Theo and this is Theo's Book Club and I make videos like this one about the big ideas and the books that I read, right? Like I'm trying to package the whole book into uh, however, this is like a seven minute video now, a seven minute video, so that you can learn everything that I learned and so you can decide which books you want to read for yourself. If you like this video, um, I would appreciate it if you would do me a big favor and hit the thumbs up button which tells YouTube, hey, this is a good video, and then I'll show up in more people's feeds and more people will watch the video. Um, also, if you want to see more of these book review videos pop up in your feed instead of whatever garbage you normally watch, then hit the subscribe button, which is also down there. And anyways, be calm and assertive and have a great day.